Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Couples Academy show. My name is Hassani. And I'm Danielle. And every morning, you should know this, we come to you for 30 minutes to give you inspiration, information, transformation in the area of your relationship. And so we're excited that this is Monday, Monday, Monday. Hopefully you had an amazing weekend. I know that we did. We did. We had a phenomenal weekend working with some of these phenomenal couples from all around the world at the last chance weekend tell them what was super exciting about it It was great because we had couples uh from all over the country uh tune in with us and they were able to restore their relationship and take things to the next level you know what people had who have been dealing with challenges in their relationship and were looking for a community to be a part of uh that they could glean from and so the the relationships that were established the 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 breakthrough that came through yeah. was just transformational. I think it's crazy because people have so much apprehension about the group experience. And from what I've experienced, what we've experienced in our marriage and what so many people find out after going through is that they wouldn't choose any other way. The group experience is the most transformational experience you're going to get because not only are you working on your own issues in private sessions apart from the group, but you are in a group and you get to glean and learn so much That's together. True. And it's not an exposing situation. It's not like we stick you in the circle and everybody gets to tell us all your business. It's nothing like that. It's actually very private, but also there's so much information that is transpired, that transpires or comes across mm -hmm. throughout the session. You come out a brand new person with so much more insight, more empathy, Mm -hmm. and sympathy for your spouse it's phenomenal and that's what we that was the feedback i'm not just saying it don't just take my word from it <laughs> that's the feedback from our groups whenever we do it so it's an exciting thing to be a part of and maybe you are ready to sign up for a last chance week and we have one coming up uh it's going to be february the 19th through the 21st just look in the description people say i'm not finding it where is it on the website we made it easy for you it's in the description underneath the video click the link find out more information about it but we're excited today guys we have have a great topic for you but before we do so make sure you like share and subscribe hit that notification bell so that you do not miss a show <laughs> guys when there are people who you know need to hear this type of content you guys write to us all the time we get messages all the time and you talk about your neighbors and they're this and you're that and how do what do i do and how do i tell my friend tell them about the Couples Academy show. We're on live every day, Monday through Friday, and we even have Q&A Fridays. So tell your friends, and then they'll like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell. All right, guys, let's get it. Be right back. We're Hassani and Danielle Pettiford, founders of Couples Academy, a private practice dedicated to saving marriages around the world. We're not just recognized authorities on relationships. We're a real couple with real problems who almost called it quits. I was very frustrated. I became very disconnected, very um, jaded and, and cold. We have four children going on 20 years of marriage and we practice what we preach. Our mission to change the way couples relate to one another and teach them the skills needed to improve the quality of their relationships. This, this is the, the Couples, couples Academy, Academy Show. All right, guys, we're back. Listen, today's topic, we're gonna jump right in. We are talking about eight ways to restore your marriage after an affair, but before we go there. I definitely wanna say hello to my people. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And good morning, Jackie, Ronald, La Ebony, DD, Jaguar, and you're from Nairobi, Kenya. Wow, that's a long ways away. I wonder what time it is there. Um, good to see you, Tahira24. Uh, we've got Sh Shandell Harden, LaShawn, Kiara, Jay, Louisa. Good morning, everybody. Don't forget to put where you're coming from. LaShawn, I see you from Ohio on this side of the world. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us. So we're talking about how to end, uh, how to restore uh, a marriage after infidelity. And we're going to go through the eight ways to do that. And the reason why this is important is because people want a better relationship, but they just don't know what to do. Yeah. So maybe I was the one who came to my wife and I said, babe, let's sit down. We have to have a conversation. Um, I have to share with you something that's happened that I'm grieved over. And that becomes D-Day. Or maybe your spouse finds out about it on their own, they discover something, or maybe the affair partner reaches out to your spouse. 
at the end of the day, you have to pick up the pieces because there is life after an affair. Absolutely. And most people don't know what to do. And uh, they don't want to seek help. They want to figure it out on their own. And they think they have the best of intentions. But as they say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Mm. So let's walk through these eight steps. Step number one, uh, we have to end the affair completely. completely. Now, this may seem obvious, (laughs) but you'd be surprised that some people struggle with uh, creating proper boundaries and knowing how to effectively end an affair. They think that, you know what, it was inappropriate, but we could still be friends. How about we somehow transition from something sexual (laughs) to something social and remove the emotional? And you can't forget, it's like looking in the mirror and walking away. You don't forget what you just saw, you just saw it. Right. Right? Yeah. Things that you experienced as a child, you remember that. Mm -hmm. And so to think that you can go from something that's inappropriate to something that's now appropriate, you're deceiving yourself. And I think it's key to say that most of the times they do not realize exactly how they need to end the fair completely because, you know, you have guilt too. You might, you might think, well, I put this person in this position. Mm-hmm. I don't want to hurt their feelings. You have all these reasons why you think you don't have to take specific steps to make sure that it is crystal clear to the affair partner that it is over. And oftentimes we'll do it in our way, right? We'll just end the affair. We won't even say anything. We'll disconnect. And then you, you know, run, run into the person in the street and now it's a problem. So there is actually a process by which you must go by to clarify not only to the affair partner, but to your spouse openly that this affair is completely ended. Yeah. You've got to send the proper messaging. You've got to shut down all forms of communication. There's a number of things you have to do. If you haven't done it, do it immediately. So that you and can if you don't know up. how, find out. There it is. Boom. All right, let's go to number two. <laughs> okay. Uh, number two, take 100% responsibility for the affair. Now, that's a big one because when you think about the, the fact that you got caught a lot of times, right? That's really when we want to uh, acknowledge the affairs when we get caught. And then the hurt partner is going to say things like, well, would you have told me if you didn't get caught? Are you remorseful because you got caught? What if I never found out? Would you have continued on? So it's different when you take in responsibility when you got caught versus actually just owning up to it. And you have both sides. You have sometimes where the person actually, they can't take it anymore. They can't handle lying and sneaking and cheating anymore. And so they actually will come clean with it. But whatever the process, make sure that you do all that is necessary to acknowledge every bit of the responsibility and eliminate the blame. Yeah, I think that's huge, the Mm -hmm. blame piece, because what happens is a lot of times, well, the reason I cheated is because you don't or you all and they're pointing the finger at their partner, making them responsible for why they did what they did, which is entirely ridiculous. Like, here's the reality. There are things that we can't deny that were not right in the relationship, right? Both of you have contributed to the vulnerability that uh, took place in that relationship, but you have to take 100% responsibility for your actions because at the end of the day, uh, if I was in this relationship too, I didn't cheat. Right. So 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 uh, you have to take responsibility for how you dealt with your issue yeah. that we were experiencing. To add to that point, I was in this relationship, too, and I didn't cheat. That speaks to the fact that just because issues were in the relationship does not give you license to cheat. And a lot of times that's what happens. And that's why I said take complete responsibility and not blame because did you think that the relationship was perfect for me? It wasn't perfect for me. So if it wasn't perfect for me or you, that doesn't give you the right to cheat. And that's what we're talking about, acknowledging your part in it and not pointing the fingers at your spouse as anything to do with why you stepped out. Absolutely. Point number three, attempt to empathize with your spouse. This is a big one because uh, to what you just mentioned, a lot of people don't feel like their partner shows remorse. A lot of people feel like their partner doesn't understand what they're going through. And we've talked about this before. Like I can respect a physical wound because I see you in a brace and a cast. I see you limping. I see you on crutches. And so if you hit a certain part of your body uh, where that wound is and you react I get that that makes logical sense but emotional wounds are intangible I can't see it I don't understand it it doesn't make sense so sometimes I'm thinking well golly is it really that bad or you should be beyond here by now like my god how long does it really take and when I see you sobbing I don't get it when I see you in rage I'm shocked and I don't get it And what you don't understand is that your spouse is going through a flood of emotions. And from one moment 
to the next moment, these emotions may shift and change. There's something called the emotional scale. And on that emotional scale, you could experience rage or anger. You could experience sadness or depression. You can experience a numbness. You could be fine one day because guess what? Today's a beautiful day. The sun is shining. You have a new lease for life, but then you're triggered by something you saw on television and now you're in a dark place. And it's like an emotional roller coaster. And you have to understand that this is the space that your partner is in until they get their healing. And so while you just want them to get over it and just move forward, so there's a process to yes. go through oh, to get there. Easier said than done. This is the power of being a part of the Academy, especially the Moving Forward program, because a lot of this stuff that we're saying to you just will not come to you naturally because in general, we, we just tend to be selfish people, you know, self-centered and self uh, preserving in nature. We are, right? So when I've hurt you, I, I've hurt myself too. Understand that. When you hurt someone, you're also hurting yourself and you feel that pain, that guilt, mm -hmm. right? That self-loathing, all of that is pain that you've inflicted upon yourself. And so now you're in self-preserving mode. So when I see the, my hurt partner acting out, I'm defensive now because I'm protecting my hurt. I haven't dealt with my hurt. These are the things that you have to become aware of about yourself, how you're operating and how you're showing up in a relationship after the affair. You may not even realize it because the truth is, is that the hurt partner is actually anchored to the pain, anchored to the offense, anchored to the affair that they had no part in. Mm -hmm. They're anchored to it emotionally, mentally, and even physically because they have physical responses. Whereas the offending partner, they're trying to get as far away mentally, physically, prayerfully, prayerfully, physically, yeah. and emotionally as possible. They're trying to get away fast, right? There's a disconnect there. If I'm anchored and I have nothing to do with it, you're the one that had something to do mm. with it and you're trying to get as far away from it as possible, you're leaving me. Yes. I'm anchored to it. So that empathy is so important and this is why we talk about you know getting your Enneagram done and understanding your personality styles so that you know how to connect and talk and why they feel the way that they feel and where you're conflicting and all of these things are so important. But that's what we teach in the academy. We help you understand these things so that you know what to do. We truly just don't know what to do. Absolutely. We don't know how to do these relationships. We never learned how to do this. You know, when I was a kid, I remember sometimes I would go in my dad's closet and I'd take his shoes out and I'd take his suits while he's at work. And now, you know, I'm a kid, right? So I'm putting my feet in his shoes. I'm putting on his big old jacket and I'm seeing what it's like to be my dad, right? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to walk through his journey mm. to see what that's like. And uh, that's exactly what we have to do in this recovery yeah. process. Like showing empathy towards your spouse simply means walking in their shoes, right? Mm -hmm. Feeling what they feel seeing what they see because when you can begin to do that you have an understanding and I think a lot of times people make it about themselves mm -hmm. they they don't want to deal with it they just want to move forward because they're dealing with their own shame and their own guilt but wait a minute I get that but you have a responsibility to show up for your spouse in a particular way to help him or her heal that becomes your number one responsibility in this recovery process to help your spouse heal you can't do their work they can't do your work but both of you working together in the healing process gets you to a place of restoration mm. all right let's go to number four four recommit to your husband or your wife and that seems self-explanatory obviously you need to recommit how do you recommit well that depends on what the details of the affair are it's so specific, right? How we all are are all interacting. It just depends. If my spouse that I've hurt is like ready to get out the door, I'm gonna go about things differently if they're trying to leave. If they're willing to work with me, then I have something to work with. We can jump right in. At the end of the day, what you really need is to get yourself into some coaching and some counseling to know exactly what to do because I see couples do it wrong all the time. Um, you know, going into separations. They think they need to just separate, right? It's not control. There's no rules. You make mistakes when you step out. So there is a process by which you need to reconcile, but obviously that's step number one. And, and I think that's so critical to understand, right? So we hear this all the time. You know, my spouse wants to work it out, but he doesn't want to go to counseling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they say they don't want to leave the marriage, but they're not willing to go and see anybody. They don't want to go do an intense. It's just like, well, where's the commitment? The commitment is in the process. In the process. If you, and, and, and let me tell you something. If you're the one who wants your spouse to go through something and they refuse to go, well, guess what? Yeah. That's the prerequisite to get back in relationship with me. 
Because if you don't go through a process where you heal and restore the relationship, all you're doing is signing up for more of the same. And that's not what we're in this for. Like, I don't want the same relationship we had. I don't want the same marriage we had. I want something completely different. But you're not going to snap a finger and become a new no. version of yourself. Oh, my goodness. It is impossible. It's impossible. And I think we overestimate our ability to fix it and just get it right. No, yeah. it takes a process. And, and, and whatever got you in that situation is going to take you just as much time to get out of it. My question is always, do you really want what you say that you want? Do you really want it? Because you're coming to us saying you want to save these relationships, but then you have so many apprehensions about how the process is going to go. What's it going to look like? I'm not, I don't want any, I, I hear, we hear this a lot. I don't want another man telling me how to treat my wife. Yes. You know, like these things, you're so concerned with the how, and we're over here trying to help you, you focus on the what. You want to restore your marriage. So you got to go what, on what we like to talk about is the blind trust walk. You don't mm. know the way. It's going to feel awkward and strange for you. You don't know the way. And so since you don't know the way, you put your marriage in the hands of somebody else that does. And you take that blind trust walk and allow somebody to lead you down the course. You will get to a destination, a definite destination when you do the work. And that's that's the big thing there. I think people are so overly concerned mm -hmm. about well, what am I going to have to give up? What am I going to have to do? How much am I going to have to be exposed if I'm going to truly recommit? All of it. Every <laughs> bit of it. You are going to peel every layer of your uh, onion off and find the root of all these problems so that you can be a better person. Excellent point. Mm. Point number five, be completely honest and, tra uh, and transparent with your spouse. And, you know, this is the foundation of it all. Like every step that we take in the recovery process is a trust building uh, uh, exercise, if you will. So when we go through the recovery, when we go through the full disclosure process, it's trust building. When we end the affair with the proper messaging, it's trust building. Mm -hmm. When we establish boundaries uh, for what's appropriate when dealing with members of the opposite sex, it's trust building. Mm -hmm. Everything that we do is for the purpose of restoring trust. And if you don't do that, then it's going to be a problem. So you've got to be transparent with your spouse about any and all. And it starts off when talking about the details of the affair. Listen, guys, I know it's painful. I know it doesn't feel good. But if you want your spouse to begin to trust you, then you've got to be transparent because if you hold on to those secrets and hold on to those truths and you take them to the grave, how can your spouse believe that you're any different today than who you were when you were involved in it? Because you're still keeping that stuff a secret, which means you're compartmentalizing aspects of your life from your partner. So that means you and your affair partner share intimacies that your spouse is not aware of. And how can they believe that anything will ever change? So in essence, you have to open up your world and be completely transparent about anything we say this all the time we have a public life a private life and a secret life the world knows about your public life your spouse your children your close friends know about your private life but those secret things that you've allowed others into in, uh, in but you haven't allowed your spouse into if you want to begin to restore that trust you have to bring them into your private life and that's what intimacy is all Absolutely. about and you know the other thing i want to add when it comes to a discovery of an affair um, you know, a lot of times the other person knew, you know, you suspected all along, you said things and there was so much denial along the way. And then when the affair comes out, the spouse that's been hurt just wants to know everything now. Just, just come out with all of it. The worst, most painful kind of truth is trickled truth. Mm. It's just like ripping, I mean, pulling slowly a bandaid off, right? We would much rather you just rip it off. It's like a quick sting. It's exposed. Now I can get a scab and heal properly. But when you start peeling it away, it literally snatches every single hair and you feel each hair individually. It's so much better to just be transparent and come clean. And we have the process here where we actually have you do the full disclosure and it's a safe place so that nobody feels like it's, it's, listen, you're going to feel some kind of way exposing the truth. You should, right? You're going to deal with a lot of things. You're going to deal with shame. You're mm -hmm. going to deal with embarrassment. All these things are going to happen. 
but it's going to happen all at once so that the truth comes out once and for all and you can move forward. And that is key. Absolutely. All right, guys, the next point, and then we're going to go some of the comments because there's a lot of comments. Protect your spouse from the details that will haunt their mind. That's that's a huge one because oftentimes, you know, uh, there are truth that you want to share, but you want to be responsible in the truth that you give. Like even the one who's demanding certain facts and details, you have to ask yourself, is this going to help or is this going to hurt harm or hinder because I can't get the thought out of my mind. I can't remove it from my brain. I can't unlearn what I have learned. And so it's very critical that you learn how to be delicate enough to, to share details and be transparent without it crippling your spouse or crippling the relationship. Yeah, and it takes practice. I mean, this is something, it's just like anything else. If you've been spending two years being in an affair, lying and cheating and sneaking and living a double life, obviously being transparent and honest is not going to be your natural knee-jerk reaction. You're going to need some coaxing. You're going to need some support. You're going to actually need some tactics and some tips and some tools on how to do that. And we support you in that way. And I think that's a good point, Daniel, because mm -hmm. you've been forming a habit for a period of time. And just as habits are developed, habits have to be broken. So it's not a switch you just turn on and turn off to say, all right, I'm going to be honest now. Yeah. Well, you've been dishonest for as long as the affair has been there. So to your point, yes. You have to begin to do it consistently, repeatedly, and the more you do it, the easier it becomes, the more comfortable you become with it. And, and the reason why a lot of times we're lying to our spouses is because really we're lying to ourselves. We're living in self-deception, and self-deception is a setup for a fall. So when you become authentic and genuine about who you are, you're able to have a level of freedom because you can share those issues with your spouse. I, I, there's a comment up here I want to read. It's from Tahira24. It says, thank you so much. You two are anointed for this. I cannot thank you both enough for what you've done for my husband and I. We are forever grateful. And I, I want to start acknowledging those comments more. Um, you guys are always saying such wonderful things about us, and we appreciate those compliments. We really do. Thank you for saying that. It's 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 our our story. It's almost like our our heart and mm -hmm. our pain all wrapped up into what we do. So yeah. when 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 we know that it's serving people, it really just touches us in a in a really sweet spot. So thank you for saying that. Um, we have some other comments in here. Let's get down here. Michelle says, he acknowledged that he cheated. Now he says we were separated when we really were were not, but was working to put the marriage back together. So essentially, they were separated, just like what we said. You know, people will separate themselves when they're going through issues in their relationship, and there's no ground rules. And so what ends up happening is you're separated, you're living over here, he's living over there, and you're off doing the mm -hmm. things that you typically do because there's been no reconciliation, there's been no support to help, especially mm -hmm. the affair yep. partner, change their habits. Of course, if there was cheating inside the marriage, living under the same roof, when you separate uncontrolled, the cheating is likely to continue. Yeah, and that's why we right. say you don't make these decisions on your own, because just like you didn't know how to operate in your marriage and function properly and why you ended up here, it's the same case when you start trying to self-medicate and self you know, correct your marriage without support. But I'm grown. I can do what I want to do. I, I, I'm a grown individual. I can make my own decisions. Being grown doesn't mean that you're well equipped to make decisions. Just because I'm grown doesn't mean I can fly a plane. Just uh, just because I'm grown doesn't <laughs> Thank mean. God. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It doesn't mean I could just uh, <laughs> you know open up a hood and, and change the transmission because I'm grown. Right. So it takes more than that. It takes knowledge. It takes skill set. It takes know how. Right. And that's just what we're like here to Just because you're grown doesn't mean you're going to do a surgery on me. Exactly. Open up my body and, and give me a, a lung replacement. I mean that's that's a, such a powerful point. Because we always do say, I'm grown, I'm a grown woman, I'm a grown man, I can do what I want to do. No, you can't do what you want to do if you want to be successful. If you want to Boom. Continue, if you want to continue Get it, Danielle. To fail. So you almost made me drop my mic. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I deal with. If you want to do things right, if you want to be to be a winner then you gotta get under somebody who's gonna coach you on how to win. I mean, athletes, man, they have the best coaches, the trainers, they make sure that they eat right, they exercise at the right time, they get the right amount of sleep. Their coach makes sure that they are a winner. And that's how they get to these big leagues. If you wanna be a big leaguer Boom. in marriage, then you need marriage support. That's gonna be our next book, <laughs> The Big League Marriage. I'm saying, let's step out of amateur and become pros at this thing. I'm trying to be a big leaguer. What? We got a lot of questions. 
Did you want to go to another one? Hold on one second. But listen, level number, uh, step number seven, <laughs> seek help with uh, the healing of your own heart. Listen, this is critically important. Uh, if you were the person who violated the relationship, don't think that it's just your spouse who needs to be healed. You need to be healed because your hurt, your pain, your brokenness uh, 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 caused you to do what you did in the first place. And it created hurt, pain, and brokenness in your spouse. And I think that we don't take enough time to work on ourselves, to heal ourselves, to become the best version of ourselves. One of the things that I love about people who are an alcoholic uh, uh, anonymous, they count their days. The significance of counting your days is that oftentimes, um, I'm sorry, wrong point. The significance of counting your days is the fact that it's a reminder of, wait a minute, I was once in a broken state and I'm counting my days every single day that reminds me that I could slip back into my past transgressions if I'm not conscious and intentional. And in my day, I have to do such and such, which will lead to the next day. And so the goal is to be counting your days and to not start from scratch. If we took that same concept and applied it to our own personal recovery process, a lot of us would be a whole lot further than where we are. Yes. So heal your own heart, um, individuals, so that you can be the best uh, person to your spouse. Because there's a reason why you do what you do, right? You, it doesn't mean that you know what it is. It could be very much unconscious, buried deep down within, right? Right? It's your job. It's all of our jobs. That's. I feel like that's part of the big purpose of us being here is to, we've all been hurt. We don't get to escape it. We come into this world and we are flawed and issues have arrived as a result of birth. And then to put injury to, or more injury to hurt, however you say that, mm -hmm. we are already birthed as flawed because we're sinful just because we're born. And then we're put into the arms of somebody who, who else is flawed. They're flawed too. And they're doing the best that they can to help raise you. But guess what? They, they have their issues and their idiosyncrasies. So now you're a child in the arms of a flawed being. So we mm. already came here with some stuff to overcome. So it's our job to do the work, unearth that stuff, figure out why am I the way that I am. There it is. Get your healing so that now you're two whole people coming together. Let's go to the last point and then we want to go back to the comments. Point number eight, express gratitude to your spouse. Listen, the fact of the matter is your spouse is still here. Oh. They haven't gone anywhere. Uh, they may be having a very difficult time, but yet they are still here. And you have to show gratitude for their willingness to stay, their willingness to work through. And if you are not acknowledging what they're doing, if you're not taking the time to operate in thanksgiving this, yeah. if you just shut down and, 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 and have this attitude of entitlement you ain't going nowhere you know it can be very dismissive and it will turn them off and may cause them to really question why are they actually doing this yes. like so you saying i'm signing up to be with the same arrogant prick right. that did what they did in the first place like where's the remorse where's the compassion where's the empathy where's the gratitude like thank me joker and even if it's not that bad because that, that that extreme exists but it even, does exist oh yeah but even if it's not that bad just the fact that i stayed you know show gratitude don't forget that like it's okay once in a while to come back to the conversation and say i just really you know when the moment is when it calls for it you know i just really appreciate that you gave me another chance like don't forget that do you realize that every year there will be an anniversary of d-day every year you're going to have d-day anniversary and your spouse who was hurt is going to think about wow this is when i found out so in that way you should recognize and make sure that you acknowledge your spouse you know, all the time. Like, I just want to thank you. And to that point, Danielle, because of that D-Day anniversary, that's why you want to be intentional as you're approaching that date mm -hmm. uh, to change um, the experience. You want them to remember something uniquely new. You want them to remember something pleasant. You want them to remember, to remember a great experience that you've shared. So you got to look at that time period, that season, that entire month to really double down and be intentional to help restore the relationship even further so that they're not going all the way back to the beginning. They're going back to the previous year when you did this amazing thing to restore that relationship and give them the love that they ultimately desire. So great point. Here's a question. Uh, if I can get it up here. Question. Is there another place to leave comments? Oh, the comments that are being read from Danielle and Hassani, I don't see them here in the live chat. So here's the deal, guys. That's you YouTube. are tuning in from multiple places, right? So if you're on YouTube, you're only going to see what's in the YouTube chat. Mm. If you're on Facebook, you're only going to see what's in the Facebook chat. We see everything all here. Uh, but another way that you can reach out to us is to text us at 678 
200-8996. You can text us there, but in order for you to see all the comments that are coming in, you'll see that in the replay, right? Because all of them will come in uh, in terms of the ones that we select that we're gonna view. But yeah, because we're in different communities and different spaces and platforms, you're only gonna see what's in your particular community. Okay. Let's go to this next one. My ex-wife uh, had an affair. I tried to fix things for two years, and she didn't care or want to fix it. <clears throat> Sadly, the person who, who cheated has to be willing to want to fix it, too. She cheated on the affair partner with her new boyfriend. Shaking my head. I agree with accepting people's flaws. I mean, this is we're dealing with flawed, broken people here at the end of the day. I mean, whatever the story is, whatever the journey, there's still hope. There's always hope for reconciliation, no doubt. Um, and that's one thing that we want to get across to you, that no matter your situation, you can always seek reconciliation. And it doesn't always take two people. It does take at least one person to start. So if that's you, make sure you reach out to us. We have a free discovery call. And I think that's our show. It is. But before we go, listen, guys, we've been talking about the programs that we have that can be truly transformational to you. Last uh, This weekend, we had our last chance weekend. And a lot of them are transitioning into our moving forward program because it gives you the support and the community that you need to overcome the challenges that you're going through. So listen, take a look at this. We'll be right back. This is the Couples Academy Show. everybody listen I those programs are just a powerful powerful thing mm -hmm. for couples to really dive into and get what they need one thing about couples Academy is that we are determined to be the holistic approach looking at every angle and doing everything that we can to make sure that couples have a fighting chance and that's something that we didn't have when we were going through our stuff. We were scraping up stuff from all over the place and we want to bring you all the resources that we can one of the biggest highlights of our uh, last chance weekend was the Enneagram assessment session where people got a chance to understand things about their spouses that they never understood before. We've even got the moving forward program that, are, that we were uh, mentioning that clients are moving into. And that's just a great way to, to have the support that you need so that somebody is holding you accountable. There are lessons, there are tips, there are tools. There's so much support there. So check it out, okay? Make sure that you check these things out to see what it is that you can pull and you need. This is great, showing up to the show every day. Are you yeah. getting your feet, you're getting fed every morning. It's like getting your morning tea, your morning dew. But you gotta take it the next step further so that you can really get the results that you want. So guys, we love you. We will see you in the morning. And if there are some topics that you want us to talk about, just throw it in the chat. Text us. Let us know we're here to meet the needs that you have for your life and for your relationship. See you in the morning. Love Bye. you guys. Take care. If you would like to be a guest on our show, or if you're interested in one of our restoration programs, contact us today at couplesacademy.org.